Also, you know what they're going to do is they're going to make a baguette in the shape of a goat and give it to Simone at some point. Oh, my God. That's going to happen. Remember, the show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Tumble Track is having a sale on carpet bonded foam and Tumble Track accessories. You can get 10% off all the stuff you need to power up your Tumble Track. Check it out on the sales tab on their website. Visit Tumble Track, that's T U M B L T R A K, tumbletrack.com. Train smart. The FIG votes to allow Russia to qualify to the Olympic Games. Olympic champion Suni Lee is back on the roster for Classic because she disappeared and then she arrived again back on the Classic roster. Fan favorite Australian all-around champion Heath Thorpe has been left off the Australian world team. We have the official response from Gymnastics Australia. It's one year to the Paris Olympics already. So we're going to talk about what we can expect and our hopes and dreams. I have many, many wishes, as you can imagine. Many, many. This <laughs> is our 30th episode for 2023. It's July 24th. And welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica, and I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Fan Situation. And let's get right to the headlines, which is so shocking. No one could see this coming. Gasp. Gasp and alarms. So basically... The big news, I think, in the international gymnastics world this week, the FIG announcing that they are, at the very least, opening up a pathway for Russian and Belarusian athletes to return to gymnastics competition uh, starting January 1st, 2024. So in terms of the Olympics, which is, you know, the first thing my mind goes to, and I assume most people's mind goes to, I'm like, but what does this mean for the Olympics? So... As we've talked about many times, Russians currently cannot qualify to the Olympics. If they're eligible to compete in 2024, they would be eligible to compete at the final individual Olympic qualifiers in gymnastics, as long as, well, they could always compete if gymnastics lets them. They would still need IOC approval in order to be eligible to compete at the Olympics. The IOC has not said anything about, yes, we're going to allow Russian and Belarusian individuals to compete as neutrals, that would still need to happen in order to for them to qualify to the Olympics. But the FIG has started the process for gymnastics, saying they're going to create some some guidelines, some ad hoc rules, which always goes great. Love an ad hoc rule. Love an ad hoc rule. There are going to be no controversies. There are going to be no questions. It always works out perfectly. Uh, So basically, this is the first step in what I think the FIG has wanted since the beginning all along, which is to make it eligible, make it possible for Russian and Belarusian athletes to compete again. And so I expect to see them competing starting in 2024 again, because that's what the FIG has said that they are moving toward. Yep. Uh, I think it's interesting that um, Jim Novosi reported back in March that uh, the recommendation was athletes who are contract and everyone should check out Jim Novosti because Luba does great reporting on this. And we have a link to her website in all of the show notes. Um, said in March, athletes, quote, athletes who are contracted to the Russian and Belarusian military and national security agencies, c- agencies cannot compete. Support personnel who are contracted to the Russian Belarusian military or national security agencies cannot be entered. So that basically takes out the entire men's team period none of them can compete not only do they are they almost all in the military but we have ningorni who's like in charge of the youth military um Mm. because that's fun for the The youth yeah the young army organization yes uh and also they also the men's team gifted a drone or some kind of weapon to the russian military and the russian military made a video thanking the Russian gymnastics team for it. Um, There's a tweet about it. uh, And they, yeah, specifically Nagorny um, uh, and other members of the team. So that's all out there. Not only are they in the army, but they're directly participating, giving weapons um, for the war against Ukraine. Um, And then a bunch of teams, uh, men on the team and women, also compete for a club that is funded by some kind of military or police organization and even law enforcement counts like it doesn't have to just be the military so if you train at that kind of gym like um Della Loyan does then you also are not going to be eligible if 
they stick to these actual rules? Well, that's the big question because we don't actually – I feel like we don't know anything about who's going to be eligible because they have not published the ad hoc rules yet. So we don't know what's in them, how broad or specific they're going to be about who is eligible to compete. Um, in the FIG statement last week uh, where they sort of announced this – that they're opening up this pathway, they said, you know, one of the things they said was to reiterate it's the FIG's firm condemnation of the senseless invasion of Ukraine by Russia and its commitment to impose severe punishments on anyone in the international gymnastics community who is involved in war or supports war. So for me, that, you know, my reading of that is, well, that eliminates all Russian gymnasts. Right, all of them, but including even Melnikova my... is at a gym that's a right. military gym. My question him. is, how are they actually going to phrase it when they come up with these rules? How are they actually going to make these determinations and institute it? Like you mentioned, Nagorny, I think I would imagine he would be barred from competition. I think he's the most prominently active supporting war Russian gymnast. Um, but what about those who are in, you know, less active or less public positions, but who have like, you know, attended one of those Putin pep rallies and had their picture taken there? <laughs> like, well, that's, I mean, that's that what is they what they are. Um, it's not funny, and, but it's funny the way he said it. that and, kid that was you know, given it, the fake someone else's gold medal from Rio to wear uh, the kid that wore the Z on his chest at the World Cup, um, whose name I'm blanking on because he is forever barred from ever having his name mentioned publicly forever yeah so uh, yeah i'm curious to see what they're gonna how they're gonna handle that what's are the wording of the rules going to be how are they going to institute this because i also my impression is that this is all because they they want the russian athletes to be able to compete because right. otherwise why are you doing this in the first place my big question here is like what has changed my question to the fig is what has changed because turned back the clock to the FIG making the announcement, first of all, that Russian and Belarusian athletes wouldn't be eligible to compete because of the war, ostensibly. Last I checked, that's still going on. So what has changed? Why were you against their involvement in gymnastics and saying we can't have this then and you're not now? Like, what circumstances has changed? And for me, it's very revealing in terms of sort of the craven hypocrisy of it to begin with which is for the fig this was never about taking a stand against putin this was about following what everyone else was doing in order to avoid bad publicity right or attention or controversy or anything like that and now they think enough time has passed that they can get away with doing what they always wanted which is having you know russian athletes compete so it, i don't think any of this reflects very well on the fig I think also they are. It's interesting that they're putting in the exact language of in, involved in war supports war because most athletes in other countries have to be in the military. That's the way they support. That's their their salary. So I'm thinking uh, Germany, um, Brazil, for example. So if you extrapolate that, that takes out yeah. anyone. If you're, if you're <laughs> this obliquely military. saying just supports war, right? Then that's every, anybody in the military. Um, and that's the way people make their living. Um, also, I think, you know, t they, uh, they've they made this very... There are m wars all over the place. Uh, and they are. this is all about, you know, not making a stand for peace or against war. But it is going with the, the tide, the political... Where the political wind blows, which is what's happening here. So, anyway. Um, not surprising. But upsetting, nonetheless. Um, all right, let's talk about what's happening with Classic, because something oh, yeah. interesting happened. I, I have a lot. I feel like we have a lot to say about Classic, and this is even our preview episode. Stay tuned till next week, where we talk about, like, gymnastics or something. But So we learned that USAG, or USAG announced that there's, uh, they're selling tickets to women's podium training at US Classic on... August 4th, which is, I, this has never happened before, right? This I, is just I mean, when, unprecedented Simone factor stuff. When, 
the USAG hosted Worlds in 2003. They sold tickets to podium training, which is how mm. a lot of people could afford to go to Worlds. Um, they did that. But I don't remember for a domestic. I don't remember the last time this happened, if it happened. But definitely not for classic. <laughs> Never for classic. I mean, I think it's a great idea because as I have long said on this show, I think that classic podium training is the best day of the year because that's when everyone shows you their intentions. Yes. It's like the big reveal of the information. Like, these are the skills I'm working on. Blah, 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 blah. Now you can figure out what my D score is because these are the skills I've been working on. These are the ones I want to compete this summer. This is what I'm trying for. So, you know, I'm excited about classic podium training. Yeah, August 4th. So we're doing a live podcast from every day of competition um, at Classics, except not Men's Senior Day on Sunday, because we're about to talk about that. They just switched the day, and uh, <laughs> tickets yeah. are already booked. So we're doing it. Right. So like we can, as a family, all get together yeah. after Classic and talk about... Well, after podium training. Podium yeah. training. We're do yeah, a podium after podium training. training we'll do a behind juniors. the scenes. Yeah. We'll do a behind the scenes club members after podium training. So we can all be like, what passes did Simone do? Okay, it was these ones. What does that mean? Let's talk about it for an hour. You know, all as you it. want to, as you exactly. need to. Exactly. This is the purpose of uh, doing these live podcasts from the events. So we'll have three um, from Classics, Podium, Juniors, and Women Seniors. We'll do those immediately following the competition um, behind the scenes episodes. I'm so excited for that. Also, some classic changes. So Suni Lee, Olympic champion, no big deal, was... Uh, announced that she was going to compete at classic then she was gone all of a sudden from the classic roster just disappeared then she was back on it so um she she said in a tweet oops i forgot to register she has said that she's still struggling with her kidneys she did a day in the life on her tiktok and um you know shows her going to the hospital and still dealing with health issues from um from her kidneys so I don't know if we're going to actually see her do more than one event and then she'll petition or do her like college bar routine and petition or how she'll be doing. But like, obviously you're going to accept a injury petition, a kidney petition from if, SUNY. Duh. If this is allowed via the rules, as we talked about it behind the scenes, my <laughs> reading of the rules is that if you haven't been to camp this year, you have to compete two events at classic and get your minimum two event qualifying score. So that's one of the main things I'm watching. I want to see how that plays out. Is oh, they're going to change the rules. Rule. So you compete in college. It's fine. That counts for camp. Okay. Speaking of changing the rules, we yes. should talk about other rule changes because other developments for Classic is the, oh, inter the yeah. International Elite Committee in uh, the U.S., the U.S. Women's Program, decided to change the qualifying score for nationals now. So it was now. the all-around score. So it was a 51 for senior women. Now that it's a 50.5. So we were watching for 51s, spending this time. And like this is after American Classic, which was a qualifying meet where yeah. everyone was trying to get a 51, because that was the score you needed then. And now it's changed back to a 50.5, which my first question is why? I don't get why. And my second question is, should you be able to change your selection procedures after the pro process has already started? I mean, I don't really care because like, oh, someone who got a 50.8, like by all means, more the merrier, go to nationals, fine. But also what is this? Why is this happening? And what is happening? And this should be, although it didn't say explicitly in the INC notes, this should be retroactive to post worlds uh, like last October or whatever right? Mm -hmm. It should go all the way back to there. So there can be camps that people all of a sudden went to and verified and have qualified now that they didn't realize. Uh, yeah, I don't really, I don't, I don't understand this. So that's why I'm like, of course, they're just going to change the rules and be like, if you're an Olympic <laughs> champion, you can just <laughs> come to championships. Yeah. Just, um, just show up. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, what I else? Also think oh, yeah. The reasoning is weird to me. This idea that there weren't Not enough, enough people, women, like the idea that there weren't enough people qualified to championships. I'm like, w on what planet? There were tons already. Yeah. And didn't we just have this with like, we're going to get to this in a minute with the men's schedule. They announced the men's roster. It's an open meet. So, of course, every man on earth 
decided, oh, I get an extra chance to go to championships, which is great. Um, more opportunity for them. But of course they all showed up. So there were way too many. And then they waited till the last second to actually change the schedule and move men to Sunday. Uh, so uh, let's talk about what happened there specifically. Yeah, the schedule was supposed to be a two-day competition Friday, Saturday, uh, the 4th and 5th at U.S. Classic. And then there was only originally one session scheduled for men, and then 70 billion men registered. And so then they were like, oh, we can't fit that at once. So they had to rearrange the schedule, add a whole nother day of competition on Sunday. So now there are two men's sessions on Sunday, which is still like not enough sessions to fit everyone they're doing eight rotation groups and two buys in both of the men's sessions so they're going to be like just p preparation wise those are going to be some long long sessions be ready for that because it's eight rotation groups in each of the two sessions um, and now the senior women which is also a much bigger field than i think anyone was expecting because, like, last year we talked about the senior class, there were, like, four people there. I think it was 13. Yeah. And this year it's 40. So it's a way bigger, um, or not 13, but it was small. We're, we're doubling the group. Yep. Um, it's a way bigger group of women, so they also have two sessions for senior women. They're both on Saturday. So it's a completely different schedule. I mean, no one's... It's necessary. I think they had by the time the registrations had happened, there was no possible other solution to this problem. They kind of had to do it this way. But I think no one's happy about such a last minute change. Like if you bought tickets to men's and then you were like, oh, well, then I can fly out on Sunday. It's men's is on Saturday. I can fly out on Sunday, go back to work Monday. And now it's yeah. like, oh, men's is Sunday into the night. You're like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Or if you're excited to see Melanie de Jesus dos Santos from France compete with Simone Biles, now they're not in the same session. So you plan on a certain time, now they're competing separately. Uh, they are honoring the tickets. But I did ask USAG about this because I was like, you know, this might give the men a feeling that they're not supported, just booping them to a whole other day and ticket holders, etc. And so this is what they responded. Uh, USAG said, any change is disruptive. Scheduling decisions were made to try to minimize disruption to as many people and stakeholders as possible. In order to provide time for training, warm-up, and competition, two competitive sessions per day was the maximum that could be accommodated. Keeping men's sessions together and women's sessions together was done to minimize disruption to clubs, their athletes, and coaches. No clubs would have some athletes on Sunday, on Saturday, and some on Sunday. The women's sessions were kept on Saturday in order to minimize disruption to ticket holders. With men's registration levels high, we had communicated early on to hold off on travel plans due to potential schedule changes. Impacted athletes can reach out to USAG. Club Gym Nerd, get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets and extra podcasts every week, athlete dossiers code guides commission your own segments of the show it also makes a great gift check it out at jimcastic.com at the join the club tab in other news australian gymnastics jail is back we talked about this a lot on behind mm -hmm. the scenes this week oh we got an official statement from uh, australian gymnastics but you guys know he thorpe who everyone loves because of his artistry he first became a fan favorite i feel like um in 2018 as bestie to world champion Morgan Hurd um, in Doha. And then, um, then, you know, he does his beautiful switch leaps, his attention to artistry, trying to get some more men's skills into the code of points. Um, and then, uh, and, you know, some kind of recognition for artistry for men. Um, and then this year, he became the Australian all-around champion. The all-around mm -hmm. champion. So the best on all the things for Australia. Um, and however, the Australian gymnastics selection uh, team were like, meh, maybe not. We're not really into that. So their selection procedure, he was left off the Australian world team. So their selection procedure says their primary target for a selection event um, is considered one, Qualify a team to 2024 Paris. Secondary target, qualification of an individual all-around position and or individual apparatus positions. So it doesn't make sense for either primary target that he is not on the team. He's not injured. Um, we don't know why they have done this. Um, since 
when we talked about this um, last week and got the official statement from Australian Gymnastics, um, I have confirmed from three independent sources, and I don't know who initiated this. Um, it, there could be another gymnast who wasn't on or a coach or, I don't know, family um, who wasn't named to the team. But since last week, I've confirmed that there was an appeal about who was named to the team, which is a normal process. The British have this too. A lot of countries do. It's like a mm-hmm. two week. No one can talk about being on the team because they're allowed for appeal process. The appeal process was won by whoever appealed. Um, and the selection committee was told to choose a new team. And they did not choose a new team, but re perform the selection procedure. They did re perform their selection procedure and they chose the same team a team without Heath Thorpe, the all-around champion. So their official statement, um, when I asked them to if there's more details they want to clarify about the selection process, they said that selection pol- policies have been published since November 2022, and... Uh, communication between all parties has continued throughout the selection process, where the challenges we face in qualifying a team to the Olympics were discussed and understood. Representing your country is a significant achievement, and we look forward to supporting our team in the lead-up and during the event. So that's a whole lot of like them. I feel like that's a, yeah, everyone should know. No one should be upset. And obviously uh, everyone should understand why there's no all around champion on the team. That's what I hear from that statement. I mean, I would still like an explanation (laughs) at some point as to why, because I think one thing that's worth emphasizing is like, we all love Heath artistry. Great. Lovely to watch. He also like, Er, absolutely earned this with his scores in the calendar year like the the outrage is not just because everyone likes to watch him and wants him to be at world championships which is true but absolutely his scores would put him on the highest scoring team for australia if you were taking an individual a specialist approach absolutely he'd be his scores would make him one of the, your top five individuals with the best chance of qualifying an individual spot to the olympics so it just makes no logical sense why he wouldn't be on the team regardless of the strategy you've decided to take which i still think is kind of oblique because their selection procedures say the number one strategy is qualifying a team to paris and then their statement about it says like we talked about how hard it's going to be to qualify a team to paris which is also true but like well then what was what is what are these selection procedures i mean the one thing that should hearten heath i hope is that being put in Australian gymnastics jail, which has a long legacy, many, many top gymnasts have been in Australian gymnastics jail and Australian gymnastics jail, if you're not familiar, um, is just when Australia has perfectly good gymnasts and great team and just decides not to use them, not to let them leave their little continent, their big island, not allowed to leave. Um, you know, George Godwin worked out great for her being put in Australian gymnastics jail. So I'm just hoping this gives him more fuel to just demolish all the scores going forward and do even better. We are one year away from the Paris Olympics already. Mm. Are we? Yeah. One year away already. Yeah. How Opening did this happen? Ceremonies, July 26th. So this, that would be That's how it happened. <laughs> A <play>. this Wednesday <laughs> marks one year to the opening ceremony. So I do think we should do an Olympic check-in. How are we feeling? What are we excited about? What are expectations, hopes, and dreams? New Year's resolutions. What are, what are the, the biggest questions on our mind? One year out. So do, do you have Olympic fever yet? No. Or is it not yet? No, it's not. You know, for me, it's a paperwork. Paperwork dread is more. Although I'm like, it's not going to be like Tokyo. It's going to be fine. It's not going to be paperwork hell. It's just going to be normal administrative hell, which is fine. So I just have to be like, that was a once in a century, hopefully, a situation. So anyway, um, right. thank you. Well, for- that was boring. <laughs> Let's make it more exciting. How now, answer dare the you, question Spencer? Again, but just say what you, I want you to say. It wasn't just for me. It was for the athletes, too, which is more important. So basically, what I'm excited about, Spencer, is a Brazilian all-around Olympic champion controversial right. could it happen very controversial i mean do i think if simone shows up simone's gonna win probably but she's human so you never know so it could totally be andragi 
I think that's totally legit and possible. I'm just saying. Big. So you're going full like predictions. I mean, you guys got on track. I'm excited about. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Okay. Well, well. Okay. Are we? Do, do you have more predictions? Like, what? Yeah. What else are you feeling? What are? What are the? What are the prediction vibes? You've got Andrade going on. Who else? Who else are you thinking about? I mean, Simone's going to break the Latina record finally, okay. instead of being uh-huh. tied. Um, and then Gabby is going to make the team. That's the other thing I'm excited about. And just by showing up, will you know? be incredibly that 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 is history making on its own just making the team gigantic and cement her legacy as a big f you to everyone that's ever doubted her or talked smack or been racist about her hair or anything else that she's done can shut it and i hope she just tells everyone to go (laughs) suck it um which she's never done but that's just my you know it would be fun That'd yeah, be, it would that'd be, be a solid fun. One. It would be I would great. enjoy that tremendously. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the Parisians f- would be really into it. It would be excellent. Yeah. 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 I think I'm, first of all, excited about, um, like, a real Olympics again, which is not to say, like, the Tokyo Olympics, but, you know, it was weird. With an audience? It, it, they, they, with, like, an audience? Like, doing it, doing it for realsies again, I think, is the thing I'm most looking forward to. Also, in terms of, like, embarrassing things to admit but also fully true like what i'm most excited about is getting back on the right schedule (laughs) like of the four the correct four-year schedule of olympics is very important to me like i feel like it's like i don't follow the gregorian calendar i follow the olympic calendar (laughs) it's like my like ever since (laughs) tokyo was postponed my circadian olympic rhythms have been off and i'm blaming that for everything that has gone wrong in any context large or small since the tokyo olympics were delayed and i want like time to catch back up with itself for the 2024 olympics and get back on track i would feel very refreshed by that and it's legitimately something i'm looking forward to in a completely unironic not just for the po- saying it for the podcast and to make jessica laugh way just that's real <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 percent real so your rhythm uh will be back on got it yeah. okay important also bars also, I'm going to say I'm excited about bars. Oh, the bars showdown is going to be incredible. But I feel like bars is the strongest event in the world right now. We're getting a lot of emerging new talents like Kaylee and Amour, Chi Chu Yen. It's a disaster that I'm saying these names now because that's confirming that we're going to go back to this conversation a year from now and be like, wait, what were you talking about in 2023? What did you think was going to happen? But between them and the people who've been around, your Ninas, your Sunnis, all of that coalescing at the same time, I think bars has the potential to be one of those really exciting like difficulty races, kind of like... 2008 ish with like Nastia and Yang Yilin and Hokishin where everyone was really pushing each other at the top. I think we are have a growing possibility that that can be happening over the next year on bars. And I'm just really excited to see how that plays out heading to Paris. I think my biggest prediction is this is going to be a veterans Olympics, much in the way that a the 1996 Olympic Games were with Boganskaya competing. But I thought the 19, in 1996 there were little girls dancing for gold. <laughs> I was told that all of the competitors at the 1996 Olympics were little girls. Is that not the case, Jessica? I know it's shocking that what? NBC wow. lied to you back Whoa. then. Uh, yeah, I know. It's almost like we have many, many episodes dedicated to that <laughs> false premise. Yeah, Shanna Miller, Amy Chow, um, Dominic Dawes, all the many gymnasts that uh, came back and were in their 20s competing and winning things. Um, that is kind of my overall like finally put that stupid narrative to rest because it doesn't matter all the times it wasn't true it's still stuck so hopefully and hopefully gymnasts will stop talk calling themselves grandmas when they're just the average age of all the other gymnasts Uh, anyway it's not like this still continues to bother me um what are your wishes like what do you want Mm. like not just you're excited about but yeah, my I think my most outlandish and unrealistic wish for the Paris Olympics is that NBC will cover it like a sport. 
and not like a star making machine of personality stories. Yeah. Like that would be really cool that's and cute. is never going to happen, but I would enjoy that tremendously. This is a pet peeve that's really been sticking with me, especially with the Women's World Cup going on right now, that it is so hard to find actual analysis of women's sports. If you want to know what's actually going on, everything is a damn profile piece. Everything's a damn like, but don't worry, she's also a mother. Let's find Ooh. out how she juggles it from day to day. It's everything. And it's insufferable. And I'm like, can you just talk about the sport, please? Can you talk about oh something God. that's going on? And that would be really cool to me. I would appreciate that tremendously. So, you know, here's hoping and definitely not going to happen that we'll see that at the Olympics. You know what we need is an analysis. Like, if we had that uh, listener who did their own data science uh, experiment for fun like our listeners do and mm. il- and talked about this is on the last behind the scenes how many times over like three olympic cycles the co- the gymnast was talked about versus their coach and it was mm. like there was like a eight to ten ratio or something like they're constantly talking about coaches and the last olympics finally they stopped talking so much about the coaches and were like oh the athletes uh are independent human beings and you don't talk about the adult in the room all the time that's i was like i love that you think that's why and not because they were like oh it doesn't age well when you talk about all these coaches and then later we realize how awful they are and you can't use any of this anymore (laughs) <laughs> All of this proprietary broadcast footage is unusable now because we spent so much time praising name redacted. Because so many of them killed themselves rather than go to prison for life. So um, I also wanted to say um, about this that uh, I want an analysis of how many times male athletes are talked about as fathers compared to women talked about as mothers. I bet every woman who has a kid is talked about that way. Whereas like being a dad is only is only mentioned if it's like a girl dad thing. And what does that even mean? Like now you can care about women's rights because your loins produced one. I don't even get what that means. Um, anyway, that's an, that's for another side rant. Girl dad. Ugh. Uh, but shout out if you're really into that. You're very proud of raising a girl and being but you better be about her rights too that's what i have to say about that um yeah if anyone said that i would like to see it but my other thing about nbc is that i hope Mm -hmm. i'm really hoping i've been waiting for this to happen like they hired the the woman to produce from nbc she seems to have changed the team um i'm hoping that they'll finally get rid of those dudes who've been the dudes on the floor filming for like 30 years and they're uh, no hire some women behind the camera and put them on the floor with the cameras in their hands. There's plenty of women who can do it. Um, And I would like them to broadcast gymnastics the way they did skating, which was like fun, interesting, playful. Like it was the joy of the sport. And they also covered all the drama that was going on because there was so much drama on skating. It was horrible. Well, it's skating. Well, yeah, it's skating. It's always, but they had the whole Russian thing. um, And it was, they just did a really great job. I feel like I want them to treat it the same way and produce it the same way. Um, that would be my dream. And I'm hoping they'll do that. Also, an all BIPOC U.S. Olympic team. All women of color, biracial Olympic team. I think this is going to happen. It's going to be a thing. I'm very excited about it. Uh, also, my dream is that the uh, FIG will finally decide that it's a huge safety issue that the freaking mat doesn't fit underneath the bars and they will make the mat fit to the uprights instead of having a giant gap that is super unsafe under the bars. That's my other hope. Thirdly, I want Simone to wear her wedding grill on the podium. She doesn't have to compete in it. But just when she gets her medal on, when we see her smile, it's going to be like, eee! her big custom made grills from her wedding. And then her husband can wearing his matching grill in the audience and cheering for her. Because obviously he's not going to play the football during the Olympics, right? They're going to give him a special your wife is doing that during the summer don't they have the summer they vacation? make them like <laughs> practice in the summer it's so oh, ugh, i know like but you don't if your wife is at the olympics you get to leave practice obviously i know that they, they haven't done that for other 
uh, other sports balls whose wives are in the Olympics. But for Simone, you obviously do. That's very important. So those are my hopes. Like we have a request. We need to show you sec. Like we need to show Simone husband second most time ranked after Simone's grips. Like close ups of Simone's doing her grips and standing (laughs) there after her routine while cheering for someone else's routine that we don't get to see because we have to watch Simone cheering for someone else and then husband number two number of shots and then for some reason Hoda is just number three number (laughs) why are we seeing her that's what's gonna happen that's the plan I guess oh my god wait do you remember during the whatever Olympics it was that the swimmer the giant swimmer who won all the things Michael Phelps um yeah there were a few Olympics there yeah all like so many he it was like he was finally married and had a kid I don't know if he had a kid yet but anyway it was like his mom was always the one they showed it was like does Mm -hmm. he even swim because all they showed was his mom right but yeah. then he's married, right? So then they, they're they sitting next to each other, the mom and the wife. And then after one of his, I was about to say one of his skates, but one of his swims, yeah. the... Um, his free he, swim. <laughs> his free swim. <laughs> his compulsory swim. He gets out of the pool and his mom is acting like, oh, you're still my baby. I'm your only one supporter here. I get the hug. But he went straight to his wife because it goes, you, you're... And then you hug the mom. You're now third in line. And it was so awkward. And she looked so dejected. And I felt so bad for her. But I was also like, yeah, how do you think Simone's family is going to react to the you're second now? (laughs) Or are they? Will the husband get like the third hug? What's going to happen? This is exactly the kind of thing that you don't want to get started. This is how these things get started. And then suddenly people are writing about how Gabby didn't clap enough at the national anthem or something. Some nonsense. And it starts here and it's going to be your fault. I'm sure well, someone can turn it into funny. racism because, of course, that's America's favorite pastime. Uh, anywho. We'll be right back after this. Some people just like to give us no strings attached money. They don't want to bother with joining Club Gym Nerd, and so they just donate. You can find our donate button for a no strings attached donation at the bottom of the club page at gymcastic.com forward slash club. I want to move on to the most important part of talking about one year out from Paris, okay. which is what are you what are what questions? What are our lingering questions? What are we thinking about the most? What are we obsessed with? Because I think what I've been thinking about the most, I think the conversation that's been going around, will this really end up being the hardest ever U.S. team to make? Because that's what we've been thinking, what we've been hearing. This idea that you have, you're going to Olympic trials in 2024, you've got Simone, you've got Suni, you've got Gabby, you've got Jade, you've got Jordan, you've got Shailise, you've got who else, you know, the new ones. Tiana, Joss Robertson, all sorts of people. Zoe Miller coming in there. Who else am I not talking about? Trinity's Uh, coming back. Samana Saker, Trinity, yeah. Yeah, there Um, are tons of people in in the mix there. Um, Is this really going to end up being... Leanne Wong, my God. They were about to add us with Leanne Wong. Yeah, Sky Blakely, who nailed it at camp. Yes. Um, is this Connor is going be... to college, by the way, in case you missed it. Connor's going to LSU, so you know, you never know, but yeah. So she's not closing the door, but she's like, This is we'll see how LSU goes. And LSU is like, I think our team should have 50 people on it this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think about that? Like, how about just a roster of 50? I think right. that would be, could be pretty good. Um, yeah, so is this gonna play out, or like, is this finally going to dethrone my uh champion of the hardest u.s team ever to make which was 2004 is this are we are we actually dethroning 2004 yes because everyone trying to make this team is going to be at least that's really in the mix is going to be a world medalist except joss robertson and i'm leaving zoe miller out and i don't want to leave her out but i think i'm going to because I you I don't see them using her. I don't see anyone who's not an all arounder making the team, like a legit oh, all arounder. That's, that's the most stressful thing you've ever said to me. Am I, I know. Are we gonna have to do all of this Tom Forstering business again for twenty twenty four if we're just it's all-arounding? horrible. 
it's worst. It's wrong. But honestly, unless you are an all-rounder and you could, like, if you have, like, a high 14, 15, like, if you can beat two other people on bars and beam, then, like, everyone else, and by two other people, I mean everyone else on the team, <laughs> um, <laughs> then, because yeah. leg events are covered. Covered, covered, covered. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, so much of it's going to depend on who's healthy at the right time, but. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah, they might totally I need a bars person and be like, like, yes, Zoe, really, right. oh. Yeah, they might end up needing, like, yeah, the one, the one person who can fill in, where yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, we need Michaela Maroney's vault score, and that means more than anything else. See you later. Right. Which could totally be that could be. kind of situation. But, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm thinking this is, like, this is, this is again, like, a, at 96 was the only time there was this, the other time. No, I'm not going to say the only, but this many with Olympic experience and medals on a team trying to make a team i mean that has to be the with this many, much olympic experience with medals that has to be recent because the u.s yeah, wasn't winning weren't. medals until yeah i think it was like shannon yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm yeah. saying uh, so many shannon so many sh- there was so, so many much <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shannon that's why it's just really shannon by an the way extreme amount of shannon <laughs> yeah uh yes so um what do you think is like the is there a weak spot as we look at how this u.s group is coalescing now that we i feel like we know who's mostly who is intending it's like we knew now that gabby has like confirmed from her own mouth that she's aiming for 2024 simone's competed at the all around at camp these are things we that were floating around now we like know that that's the intent yeah um yeah, what is there is there a weak point where you're like someone could break through with this routine? Like if you don't think Zoe Miller can like a bars a single event bar specialist, is there an event where it's like, oh, they need that? Beam is kind of the only place that I'm thinking now mm-hmm. is the breakthrough, which Gabby Douglas is great at beam and bars. Um mm-hmm. I that is the one that I'm kind of thinking of because I feel like vaults vaults covered. I don't have to worry about vault. Everyone has a fine a start value. Double full. A chance go double yeah. full or, you know, something equivalent in the start value that they're going to be fine. I mean, they're going to have three or four of those. Jordan Childs, Simone, um, Shailise. Yeah, everybody can do one. Um, mm. Yeah, with Beam, like, obviously you're thinking if you have the big the the returning olympic all around champions beam is totally covered the next group like you wouldn't necessarily have jade doing beam in a team final or shailise at this point doing beam in a team final because of consistency even though the ability is there um you know jordan child's good at beam has some falls in her history there would be room for someone like if a connor mclean were like I'm zooming in. I'm peeking at the right time. Here's my beam score. I feel like that's the event where someone could still really swoop in. Yeah. 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 Beam is kind of the thing. Um, also, like, yeah. I want to talk about Gabby coming back again. Because, like, there's never been two, let alone three Olympic all-around champions on one team. So that would be just so... They would have, like, more Olympic experience than anybody else there. Literally, who I mean, the only people they have more Olympic experience than some teams combined. No, I don't just mean teams. I mean, like, no, I'm saying like the individual, like Gabby Douglas as an individual would have more Olympic experience than other whole countries. Yes, and other whole countries. That's totally yeah. true. Yes, but I mean, like, who on that's running USA Gymnastics except like Cecile Lamont have been to three Olympics? If DiCello makes it, Kelly Hill's coaching her again. Kelly Hill's been to 5,000 Olympics, right? Right. Sacramone, uh, one. Memel, two, one. What one. are you, so wait, what are we counting here? I'm thinking Just... who are there, what are the people that are running the elite committee that have been to more Olympics than Gabby Douglas and Simone Biles? Oh, okay. Yeah. But like they have more experience than the coaches. Right. They have more experience than the coaches yeah. or the administrators. Right. Sure. Yeah. Which is the one or yeah. one of the reasons that I'm just like the IEC, like, oh, you're just changing rules. Like you didn't see these things coming and Kelly Hill is in charge of it. So she should see all the things coming. But I also understand them not wanting it to be like it was back in the day where it's just like a petition-a-thon. 
Um, but then again, your whole job is to get the very best gymnast at the time. So Sunni's kidneys should always just carry their own peti- petitions already filled out, ready to go. <laughs> Her little kidneys yeah. can just whoop, hand them out. You should have yeah. like, there should be a possibility for like an in perpetuity petition. Yeah. Just like I have accomplished this much. I have a kidney thing. That's just going to be a thing that we're managing. So as right. needed, I may not be able to compete and you're, you still want me and you're going to deal with that. Yeah. Um, so basically what we're telling ourselves right now is that at various times over the next year, we will have to take a detour and just talk about the possibilities of the U.S. team. Because yeah. you need to work through it. As like, who are the, who is beam? Who are the bars? Who are the bars yeah. gymnasts? You need to work through it as needed. Yeah. Yes. Do you think there will be Russian gymnasts competing at the 2024 Olympics? Yes. Totally. Yeah. How many total can qualify again? Three women, three men. So it's going to be a yeah. total of six on both sides for in artistic. Yeah. Because they can still qualify rhythmic. As and long as we're tramp. assuming, as long as we're treating it like three gymnasts per country. So as long as we're still saying you are competing for Russia as a country, even though you're not competing for Russia as a country, you're competing as an individual Olympic or a- unaffiliated Olympic athlete or whatever, which gets into the weird... The, rock. the weird nitty gritty of like Russian Olympic okay, but you're still you're still acknowledging that they're Russian because right. you're only limiting it to three per country, but also you're saying they're not representing Russia. Right. It's just ridiculous. They should have no emblem, not the rock. They should just compete. Under well, we don't the know if they're going to do that. Russia. Uh, they may not do that Russian Olympic committee if they allow them this yeah, time. They true. may just say like you're unaffiliated. Like they could just give them the Olympic rings or something. Yeah. I think that would be better. They should give them Ukrainian flags. I think that would be worse. Make, I feel like that would work. that would go go problems with a fundraiser hotline for support the Ukrainian war effort. That's what I meant by a Ukrainian flag. With a scan, you can hold up your TV and scan to support uh, Ukraine staying independent. You can buy them drones. They have to advertise to help the. Ukrainians. Let me be very, very. Yeah, hold up your phone to the TV. You know when you scan the QR code, Spencer. Why are you yelling at me about QR codes? I never <laughs> said I didn't know what a QR code was. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> Does anyone do that? By the way, I've done it like on a billboard. Hold up your phone to the TV to scan a QR oh, code, like for an ad. No. The only time I will deign to do that is in menu in a restaurant situation. Oh, I hate it when you have to do that. It's a necessity. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's really rude that they make you do that. Anywho, I digress. I bet we won't have to do that in Paris, which is what. How many baguettes are they going to stuff in people's hands? The whole NBC thing. It's basically getting sponsored by gluten. And here is a I baguette love for being you. Sponsored baguette. By gluten. <laughs> Gluten is oh, the best. The best. <laughs> so delicious. Um, do you think they're just going to have, like, as props, NBC is just going to hand out baguettes? Oh, God. It's going to be so much. Like, what are the things from France that we can think of? Yes. Baguette, they're gonna... like, God, a- Andrea Joyce in a beret. <laughs> She's Good not coming Lord. back. Let's be clear. I still, want to, I still need to talk about it, though. <laughs> oh, God. She's not coming back, right? Yeah. Um, oh, God. They're going to, like, a... have we bring Lori in and make her do something embarrassing. Yes. She'll be adorable, but still, it'll be, like, hor- where she has to, like, wear stripes and a beret and be, like. <laughs> oh, they're not going to do <laughs> berets, else? right? We're not. We're not going back to what? berets. Everybody knows that's not a thing, right? They're not going to have her painting by the Sen with a beret yeah, they, they and a absolutely little mustache. Will. This is going to happen. Yeah, 100%. No. But they should send <laughs> Lori all over Paris. Like, that is the thing. That is the move. You send Lori to, like, beatbox with the, you know, kids in the corner. And then you go to have her, like, shopping. And then you have her go to a fashion house. And then you have her mm-hmm. eat baguettes, obviously. Yeah. Uh, then you have her dance somewhere. There is dancing. By the sin. Yeah. I approve. They should, yes, they should have Lori being like Lori Lori's, all ticket, the French Lori's tour of Paris. Yeah. Yes, that's the thing to do. Um, also, you know what they're going to do is they're going to make a baguette in the shape of a goat and give it to Simone at some point. Oh my God. That's going to happen. Yeah. And, but you know what Simone should do with her She's going to get a cheese shaped, a goat shaped 
cheese, but it's not going to be goat cheese. <gasps> Rude. And we're going to be like, what, what's going on? <laughs> um, is anyone going to mime a baguette or something French during their floor routine? Like the most, like oh, an accordion. No. And... The opening ceremony outfits are going to be bad enough. Although I am really looking forward to the Sen opening ceremony and Me doing too, like a whole floating. different thing. I'm Who's putting that be... in my, ex- what are you excited about category? I'm excited about that. There are going to be so many countries that are just like put berets in their opening ceremony outfits and like That's all of those horrible. kinds. Of, oh my God. Who's going to use Ratatouille as their floor music? Hmm. It's good floor I mean, music. There's get crashes on it because, and bangs. Well, it's not going to be the oh, U.S. unless Belgium. we've heard it yet. Because they, no one's getting a new floor routine for another 50 years. You got your one. Deal with it. <laughs> Gabby is going to have a new floor routine. Mm-hmm. That is not going to be choreographed by an American. So there's that. Um, there is a Simone that should have a new routine. Although I'm sure it's going to be all the same moves because it always is. Um, Jordan Childs has a new routine, I think. A new elite routine. Um, okay. Did BJ Shailise... choreo- choreograph it? I'm not sure if BJ did. She probably did. Shailise has a new floor routine. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Uh, so we should see a lot of new floor routines. We're going to have to talk a lot about that. So much about floor routines. Oh, Jay, yeah. uh, George, um, Jade Carey. Jade George. <laughs> Jade Cor- Carey, Corlia and routine. Jade Jor are the two people Jessica's put on the Olympic team so far. So okay, here's... mark it down. The predictions are in. Jade Jor. Wa- All right, here's the thing I really want to happen though. I want whoever made Simone's grill for her wedding. They're matching uh-huh. he and she grills. Uh, is I want someone to do- so? Is there anybody that doesn't know what a grill is? Right, it's a sparkly tooth We're fine. appliance. Okay, We're fine. so um, Google they- exists. I- it's gonna have the goat on it it's gonna be a goat grill that's what she's gonna reveal put the metal on smile goat grill come on simone do it do it (laughs) oh and then they'll ban grills um oh yeah but that's how it's gonna be like in the interest of artistry one must not (laughs) don't perform a a skill or have a grill on the floor (laughs) exercise that's not during the one minute 30 can you imagine minute. like who was it who's the guy that fell on high bar and he was in the oh my men's... god you have to be more specific who's the guy <laughs> who fell on men's... high bar uh, literally he has a of tattoo of the ant or something the tick and he um married a volleyball player from the otc and he fell on high bar and he was in the se- remember remember when they have used to do a men's version of the swimsuit issue the, the uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit. He was at Blaine Wilson. How can okay. you not remember from that description? Um, um, you could have said something defining as a characteristic in some way that I would remember. Chewed gum like on every married event. Married a volleyball or something or whatever you were talking about. <laughs> he chewed gum on during all routines. Chewed gum. I don't understand. I don't want to understand this. How this is the this? point. I know, right? <laughs> so here's the thing: they made a they made a rule about makeup before they made a rule about chewing gum, which can literally kill you during a floor during any gymnastics. You can't chew; it could choke you. If anyone can do it, a gymnast could get choked by some gum during a routine. That's what I'm saying. Do a triple <laughs> double, then step on some gum. The gymnast special. <laughs> Oh, okay. So anyway, you guys, if you have predictions, let us know. The goat <laughs> grill, I am so into this now. All grill makers, yeah. send your prototypes to World Champion Center, blubbity blub, Texas, wherever it is. What? <laughs> Great address. <laughs> yeah, you can find it. It's sure. spelled like the French centre or whatever. I don't know if that's how you spell it, but it's not spelled American. It's French spelling. It's not spelled American. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to speak American. It's not E R. It's R E. Right. That's mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. That makes it fancy. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, we have some dumpster fire news to get to. So please, if you don't want to hear any dumpster fire news, fast forward thirty seconds. Okay. Durham gymnastics coach has been found not guilty. So a jury on Friday morning found a Durham gymnastics coach, Stephen Maine. M-A-Y-N-E, not guilty on four counts of indecent liberties with a minor and sexual battery. So 
that happened this week. Okay, on to other news. So, do you remember when uh, Victoria May, she was the Townsend uh, coach, Townsend Gymnastics, filed mm. lawsuit against the school? Remember when that happened? Yes. Oh, Spencer. So, I mean, it's kind of a big deal because uh, it was a bias suit. And I don't know. I feel like this happens a lot, but we don't hear about lawsuits about it. So she settled her lawsuit and her lo- lawsuit was based on a claim that she was fired because of her gender, because of her pregnancy um, and in relation to reporting discrimination, that all of those things led to her being fired. But she settled the suit. So. That's good news for her. Um, let's see. Andrade is making her Pan Am debut. I felt like Andrade had to have competed at all the Pan Ams, but not the not according to the Olympic Channel. This is the, the Pan, Pan Am, Am Games. Games. This will be her debut. Yeah, which is not the championships. Pan Am Champions, championships. She has competed, in, but I just assume she's competing at, at everything because we've been following her since she was like twelve, and I was like, what has she not competed in? But apparently the Pan Am Games. So in Chile, also Tomas Gonzalez, uh, finally he just published a Chilean gymnast. He published a memoir mm-hmm. and he came out in his memoir. I don't think we knew before this uh, that he was mm. gay, but he has finally come out. He was also the president of the Chilean Gymnastics Federation. Came under some scrutiny because uh, people felt like he did not handle uh, abuse claims well when he was in that position. But there we go. That news is happening too. Um, if anyone has knows if that book's coming out in English, I'd love to read that. Also talks about abuse from his coach um, in that book as well. Um, so what else happened? Um, that is pretty much the main news. I feel like we may have more news next week in our uh, classic preview. But I did want to get to a couple of feedbacks from past episodes. Um we do a lot of these on behind the scenes, like tons and tons of answering questions. Uh, like we did, we got to so much this week. I was very proud of us, but we do have some follow up. Remember when we did was she was robbed episode. Mm, oh, do which, I. oh my God. Basically we just got the reply. People just wrote Shannon Miller a thousand times and sent it in. And we're like, we left her out for a reason. We have a whole episode about Shannon Miller. We've interviewed her multiple times. Like, it's Shannon Miller. You don't need, like, No, duh. she was robbed. The headline was Shannon Miller. We led with Shannon. No, no, no. Oh, wait, sorry. I meant about the Beam Experts episode. Yes, mm. we did lead with mm-hmm. Shannon and the She Was Robbed. I meant the Beam. That was cor- the, correct, the correct, most heinous robbery. Yes, it was. Stand by it. Okay, so we have a She Was Robbed Mohulan, which... Uh, yeah. This is from Jacob, who says, ready for an extremely gym nerdy email? Always. Yes! Buckle up. I loved the recent She Was Robbed episode and want to provide some additional context about the 1996 Olympic vault final and Simona Aminar's much debated second vault. The episode inspired me to finally dig through my box of 10 plus years of 90s and 2000s international gymnast magazines to find an article I remembered about this very topic. I've attached the February, 1980, 90, February 1998 article. Aminar's second vault was a Phelps vault, which is a half-on, so a souk, half-off, two-front layout. While she piked the vault pretty severely, Aminar was one of the few gymnasts to try to perform the vault as depicted in the Code of Points. Pretty much everyone else, including J.C. Phelps herself, performed a souk layout half with the twist occurring later, which is a similar but much easier vault. The International Gymnast article goes into a detailed description of what makes the Phelps vault essentially biomechanically impossible and why this vault should never have been included in the COP in the first place. The gymnasts who performed this vault cleanly were actually performing the souk half and inexplicably not being deducted for it. In summary, was Mo Hui Lan robbed in the 1996 Olympic vault final? Absolutely. But does Aminar deserve credit for actually trying to perform the Phelps vault as described? Yes. Her vault is a piked ugly mess, but unlike everyone else, she performed the half turn at the correct time. Justice for Simona Aminar's ugly second vault. Yes, two things can be true at once. Mohulan robbed constantly her entire career. One of the most important, groundbreaking, beautiful, perfect, exquisite gymnasts of all time to ever have lived. And yeah, Aminar tried to do the vault right. Yeah. 
But I mean, Aminar versus Mohilan. Mohilan, a <laughs> giant of gymnastics in everything. She walks. It's goddess like. Aminar, go to a vault. Power. That, that's okay. Powerful. Stupidest rules follow ups. Yes. We have some stupidest rules follow ups. Okay. Um, I'm making you read the next one because there's like. Brazilian. So much Portuguese. Yeah. We've Brazilian actually talked talk, about yeah. this before. Um, we have a whole episode where we uh, where we got Amy Borman, Simone's coach, got really mad at us because we talked all about the lyrics in her in Simone's floor routine. And she was like, thanks a lot, guys. Um, so anyway, Victor says, I was listening to your podcast from June 27th, Dumbest Rules, when you talked about Simone's music choice and having words in it. Fun fact, those words and melody uh, are in Yoruba. Yes, that's correct. They are in Yoruba. We talked about that originally when she did the... Um, when she did the uh, the routine, so for the Rio games, they were extracted from a Brazilian song by Jorge Ben uh, Hor called Mas Que Nada. The salutation, O Aria Rayo, asked the African goddess Oba for strength and blessing so everyone can, actually it's a V, O Aria Rayo, I think, blessing so everyone can enjoy the musicality that unites continents. Uh, whoever worked with Simone and the team to choose these lyrics really did their homework and absolutely nailed it. Yes, I believe that was, I mean, it was chosen specifically. Um, and if you know anything about Brazilian culture, the Yoruba culture, um, the Orishas, everybody super important to the culture. It is like enmeshed in Brazilian culture. So it was so smart to include that. It was such a beautiful nod to the culture of Brazil. And um, yeah, but they're totally lyrics. They were just like, oh, it's like a song about, you know, Orishas and Yoruba. Nah, we're not going to count it as words, even though it's totally words. Um, that's like when people sing the, um, what's the thing where you hold up your baby in the audience or your dog? What's that from? The Lion King? Lion yes. King? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that's, that is actual lyrics and words. Those are, it actually has a meaning. That's not, da, 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 do, 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 do. it's like specific words and language. <laughs> what? I don't know how the song goes. I don't know the lyrics, but it's something people, it's like a beautiful thing. I knew, you knew what it was once from a TikTok, but I don't know what it is now. Anyway, lyrics, 97 repetition. You know what someone should do with some crazy Latin in a song? I'm surprised the Romans, or Romans? The Romanians haven't done <laughs> You know, when the Romans You're surprised the Romans haven't Latin. done enough Latin? That was kind of their I'm thing. I'm surprised like there hasn't been a super <laughs> Catholic country. I was going to say Romania. Some super, or Italy, who has done like some mass before. Uh, that or would one get of recognized these... in a second. It would, but they're not going to care. If they didn't allow Latin, but they allowed, they're not going to, nobody speaks Latin anymore. Basically, if it's not, they're not going to take out Latin. Especially if it's some religious thing. Oh, one of these colleges is totally going to do it. I am surprised this hasn't happened in a college routine yet. Someone doing like a full cross themselves mass. Someone's going to do it now. <laughs> well, just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to happen. 97 repetition. Tribute to the 80s says, the stupidest rule, in my opinion, is the 1997 repetition rules. Should a gymnast get difficulty credit for doing two full ins and a floor routine? Maybe not. But I'm also not opposed to it. Ending with one, I assume, is very difficult and aesthetically pleasing. However, the tragedy of the introduction of the repetition rules are probably clear as follows. No more back handspring layout, step out, layout, step out, layout, step out, like Lee Senko and Miller in 1992. No more round off layout, step out mount, layout, step out, layout, step out back handspring, layout, layout, and the same uh, routine. Didn't Lysenko do this circa 1991? No more whip, 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 double back. No more whip through to pike full in, followed by a tumbling pass like Semescal. Uh, no more double layout, immediate punch front, and double tuck, immediate punch front, dismount like Mitova. Uh, in my opinion, certain events like floor and beam benefit greatly from repetition, at least in terms of connection value. Love the podcast and thanks for all you do. Hashtag gaze for Spencer. Yeah, it's not just the straights anymore. <laughs> um, I. Uh, this is so interesting because, like, I hate. I like the repetition rule that you can't just like do two full ends in a floor routine. 
But I love five layouts in a row on beam. The -hmm. problem with it is it's not fair because only tiny people can do it or you have to gainer the crap out of it to get your, and then it's not as beautiful. So I feel like unless it's four in a row, you can't repeat it. (laughs) (laughs) That makes no sense. Four Takacha variations in a row on bars. But if it's three, if you do three, zero credit. Does it count? Zero credit. Nope, you're out of there. Just zero for the whole routine. <laughs> just a zero, three. just a disqualification, just a full but if disqualification. You do four, if yeah. you do enough, proud to go, oh, 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 there's more run. Get really psyched. That's basically the measure. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Jessica's ad hoc rules. Because you could do <laughs> four repetition. on beam, even if you're like an yeah. uh, average height person, as long as you start from a layout onto the beam. So mount, layout on, then. Lay out, lay out, lay out. You could do it. You'd have to gain her a little bit. Things but then you don't can't have deduct. to be fair for everyone of every height. Yes, it does. Because gymnastics. No, it ha- yes, it does. Because gymnastics has a spite, uh, has to work for every single body type and every single country in the whole world, which means it has to work for every body. Yes. Um, it doesn't now. <laughs> it doesn't now. That's what's wrong with it. How would you possibly make that doable? You'd have to get rid of uneven bars as an apparatus entirely. No, you allow people to adjust the bars like they used to be able to be adjusted. And instead of now being like, oh, How- this is, oh, you're three feet tall. You still have to jump four feet to the high bar. That's not fair. How is that fair? It should be proportional so, to your body. Right. But so you're six, seven, six foot seven. The bars do not go high enough for you to you be able to You don't do deduct bars. for someone bending their knees on the underswing so they don't hit their, hit their feet, just like they do on the P-bars. I don't know if that's still true, but on the P-bars, they do, do that. Do you deduct for them hitting their feet? Uh, they yeah. they can't not? Yeah. Because they physically can't not. All right. Well, <laughs> could you, if you're 6'7 and you bent your knees... Yeah, you just wouldn't be able to That's do that. already it. you should already get bonus points for being six seven and bending your knees. It's so hard. <laughs> you <laughs> would have is to so hard, you guys. <laughs> you would basically have to be amazing at stallers because you're not gonna be able to do and like toe ons because you're not gonna be able to swing under. There's a way to do that. My only thing is low bar. Like, could you kip? You probably can't even kip if you're that tall. So yeah, you a no kip routine. It's great. Works for everybody. <laughs> Beam's gonna be way easier because you could just step onto it. You don't even need a board. You don't need to jump. <laughs> Acro series. How do you fit two elements? But I mean, that's the thing. You can only fit two elements. But I mean, if we have a six foot two floor world medalist, you know, we. I mean, we do. So it's possible. It just makes you more creative. So I, yeah. Where do you land on the? repetition do you agree four four or nothing (laughs) four or nothing yeah um i do like a i think a repetition is fine as and you don't but you never get difficulty credit the second time but we you encouraged it through better connection bonus i'm fine with like i don't think you should be able to get difficulty credit a second time for doing the same skill agree in but any you, context yes, but you get and so i with. don't like it in ncaa where you can like do things but it's in a different like combination right or, and you're doing the same path that's the past that's the kind of repetition i don't like um but i like you know if you could just crazy connection with your million layout step outs love it yeah all right well we fixed it ah <sighs> excellent okay um but I also feel like we have um, hypocrisy because you can do, you can repeat back handsprings, you can repeat round offs. Yeah, but those are transition. That's like repeating a kip. Like it's just a transition skill. Yeah. Like you can't just run and turn around backwards. I mean, some people can do that and it's insane and they actually tumble out of it. That's nuts. So we do have a suggestion that Melbourne 2027 is the perfect city. Larissa says for world championships because it's walkable. They have public transport. Uh, it's hosted artistic worlds before. They're going to have the 2026 Commonwealth Games, so they'll be all prepped for it. 
I mean, do you know at Bondi Beach they have um, poles, like a workout area, and they have poles for like pole dancing on the mm. beach? Yeah, just in case. You wanted to know about that. I wanted to let you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> oh, uh, how did the scoring get fixed after 2004? This is about NCAA. Um, Nicole says, thanks for being an accessible source of news and fun for international fans. Folks compare today's scoring dilemma to the highs of 2004, but I've never heard what was actually done to fix the problem then. I assume the starting values weren't changed, so it must have been something more cultural. Do we know how it was done so we can replicate it? I work uh, peripherally to change management, and the idea of shifting that many people's decision-making, convincing, I'm guessing, tens if not hundreds of judges to actually apply the code in such a short period of time is fascinating. Also, I assume it was better in 2005, but was it that immediate or a little more gradual? So this would be about college scoring. College scoring, yes. Um, which was lots of tens in two thousand four. Um, basically, it was the introduction of the judges' assignment system, right? I think that's what happened then. Yeah. It was like, oh, you can't just like have coach your, your be- judge your best friends meet and give all of her gymnast tens. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was not gradual. Like two thousand five, the scores immediately went like boo. And then yeah. worked their way back up mm-hmm. since then. Which is very telling. Very telling. But making that people change their minds, like getting it done, I think it's like, because there were only three teams, four teams at that point who'd ever won. <laughs> and that's like, it's it was just going more that direction. They kept winning and winning, winning. Also, I think that the you know teams outside of the SEC were winning, and that was very upsetting to the teams who had the, you know, all the money in the SEC. So they were like, all got together and were like, we need to stop this uh, and keep it at home. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, if, no, we're getting, we're getting get classic. Grill. We're getting classic excited. It's classic yes, is coming, week. Jessica. We're so this talk week, about it. Full preview next week. We're going to yes. have podcasts from classic. Jessica will be there. I will be watching on the internet so we'll have it all covered in arena complaining about nbc we've got it we've got the the whole the whole gamut all angles three behind the scenes live podcasts from classic preview coming next week behind the scenes this week we need to talk about some routine construction too i'm very excited about that why i'm excited for podium training i know I can't wait to see who has the worst beam composition that I can get mad at. You can be like, why? Why didn't I'm anyone like, tell you? Or if they did tell you, why didn't you fix it? Uh, okay. I'm very excited for classic. So, um, all right. We'll see you guys on Behind the Scenes on Friday, noon Pacific. Chipcastic.com, or you can listen on your favorite podcast player anytime afterwards. Thank you. So much to all of our Club Gym members. You guys are the reason that we can afford to travel to Classics and do all these this live extra podcasts. Um, so we appreciate you so, so, so much. And remember, too, until Friday on Behind the Scenes, take a bouquet, split on rights, and we'll see you on Behind the Scenes. Thanks for listening. This show is created, executive produced, produced, edited, audio engineered, and published by me, Jessica O'Byrne. Managing editor in charge of show notes, podcast content, and wrangling over enthusiasm is Spencer Barnes. Our news editor is Uncle Tim of gymnastics-history.com. And customer service IT, Gymternet News, and additional production services are provided by Steve Cooper, aka Fact Check. <laughs>